Welcome to High Fine Stage Dives, a SoCan licensed podcast coming to you weekly from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Each week, I talk about a song that's been stuck in your head at one point or another, or stuff you've never heard before. Welcome to this musical journey. Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of High Fine Stage Dives, and as always, your host, Ivan. This nice soothing music is very good, but I'm giving you a warning now. It's going to get real fucking mean, real fucking quick. We're going to be exploring the ups and downs of hardcore band Poison the Well. I remember finding these guys by accident. I think it was a UT or a iTunes or some shit. But when I heard them, oh my fucking god! <laughs> I was finally introduced to uh, the world of hardcore the proper way, I guess you could say it, with 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 singing. <laughs> Blew my fucking mind. Need I say more? Like this song alone was like holy shit. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Poison the Well. I don't know where this is gonna take me. It's going to take me down a weird one, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just... Fuck it. Let's just go. We'll see what happens. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Obviously, I'll tell you the history about them and all that good shit, but uh, these guys are a shit show. Uh, Poison the Well is an American hardcore punk band from Miami, Florida. Pretty rad. Uh, (laughs) They were last signed with Ferret Music in 2010. They announced a hiatus to explore other interests. Guitarist Ryan... And drummer Chris Hornbrook were the only remaining founding members, although vocalist Jeffrey Maria was featured on all five full length albums. What sparked this one is follow Krang on Facebook, and every once in a while they put out the. They do like a 20 years ago today, this band did this, and it was one of those, and it was fucking. They were doing uh, Nerdy. Was it Nerdy? No, sorry, it was Botula. It was Botula. <laughs> and Botula is actually the song that I will be featuring. Uh, it is my favorite, hands down, song by Poison Well. I believe that's... Is that the first song I heard by them? It was one of like the first three, for sure, of the songs that I heard by Poison Well, and it fucking... Just fucking did. It fixed me. <laughs> it opened a whole new world of mean music for Ivan. It was great. Okay, so, like I said, they're from Miami, Florida. They're genres. Metalcore, post-hardcore, melodic metalcore. Yes, yes, and yes. It's the first time I agree with all of them. That's that's a first for me. Uh, years active, 97 to 2010. Then he took a major hiatus. Well, major, five years. Uh, 2015 to 2016, and then they went on another hiatus. The stories I caught, I tell you, it's fucked. I think I got more info on their makeups and breakups than I do on their actual fucking music and shit. Uh, labels, Good Life, Trust Kill. Undecided, Atlantic, fuck Atlantic, Ferret. Uh, so members, uh, Ryan Primick, Chris Hornbrook, Jeffrey Maria, and Bradley Grace. So let's go back to 1997. Uh, the band uh, originally named An Acres Lost uh, and was started by Araya Lear and guitarist Ryan Primick. During the first few years, the band had two vocalists, Lear and Dwayne Hosen, who went on to form a jealousy issue. With this lineup, The band recorded the material for the first proper release. Uh, After this album, the band changed their name to Poison the Well. Good choice. Great fucking name, too. Picking names can be really fucking hard, and then Poison the Well is a great name. And I love everything they do. The guy's voice, like, you can scream. uh, How do I explain this one? Like, I like his singing, and I like his hardcore style. Because the, the, har- the hardcore style is out there a lot, and there's a lot of guys that do the hardcore style, but it's not very fluid, I guess. It feels super forced. I mean, it sounds forced to begin with, but that's how it is. I don't know. I I, 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 I think this is... The, I just I like it. That's all there is to it. I fucking like it. I like it. I hope you guys like it, because I like it. If they don't like it, well, I guess whatever. Another one. <laughs> so, ah, uh, change your name to Poison Well. After the popular rhetorical device... The band then released their first album under their new name. Distance only makes the heart grow fonder in 98. Uh, the album gained them enough attention uh, that they got a record deal with Trust Kill Records. And they sold, they signed them to a multi-album deal. After that, that's when uh, Lear and Hoisin... Hoisin? Hoisin. It's spelled like hoisin sauce, like food. <laughs> Exited the band. Jeffrey then came in 
to fulfill the uh, vocal duties, and he remained in the band. And that was when they had a full band lineup, and they released the opposite of December, a season of separation in 99. So the Kerrang! video I watched, he sang Botula. He sang it perfectly. I was beyond fucking impressed. For this guy to be thrashing his vocals like that and actually sing it, that's, that's not very easy at all. Uh, so 2001 and 2003, Tear From The Red was a transitional record for Poison The Well. Uh, it was also recorded in six weeks at Studio 13 in Pomona Beach, Florida, for six grand. That's pretty fucking good, because that's a full album, some killer songs for six grand. Like you, You're hard-pressed to do that. Even then... But now, good fucking luck. I mean, you could do it at home, but you're going to pay out your ass for fucking mixing the master and your shit after. So uh, This is when the band had wanted to make a record that had more melody, but still could be extremely heavy at the same time. That's where I was talking about with the, the singing and the hardcoreness. And I think they totally achieved it, and they kicked ass, and they, their evolution is fucking amazing on it. And it's just it, great. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That's when they started like a crazy cycle that took them all, like a touring cycle that took them all over U.S. and Canada. Like with bands like Hatebreed. Kill it, Kitty. Kitty actually played here not too long ago, which is kind of weird. Kill Switch Engage, fucking amazing band. Unearth, Unearth is no longer a no nope, wrong band. Never mind. <laughs> and 18 Visions. It's a great lineup. I was never lucky enough to see Poison the Well, and it's by the sound. Obviously, they're still on hiatus, so unless they come out of their hiatus and decide they're going to do some some hoorah fucking anniversary tour. Uh, but fuck, man. Amazing, amazing band to see if I could. Because of the success of Tear from the Red, Poison the Well began to get like some major, major label attention because they, they toured hard and they fucking play hard and they kick ass and it's what they do from the interest in the bands coming from the hardcore scene because we started doing that whole cycle where it was a new a new thing coming out and they did it and they got there so they signed with atlantic at that point in 2002 and started writing for the third studio album you come before you poison the well wanted to continue the evolution of their sound that felt they needed to team up with people who understood where they were going and what they were where they were coming from and what they wanted to do and all that good stuff which is really important, especially when you're recording, right? You start to evolve and you, and musically. You want those people that are going to support you doing that, especially coming from their their standpoint of like in your face, screaming hard, real hard all the time, crazy riffs all the time to more melody. It's it's a big, there's a big juxtaposed situation there, right? Uh, so they recorded with the Swedish producer Pele Hendrickson and Elski Lovstrom. This name, that Lovstrom, is spelled amazing. It's got little dots. I can't remember what they're called above the both the O's. It's great. <laughs> both had worked on. Late 90s Swedish hardcore records, so like the Refused, Songs to Fan, The Flames of Discontent, The Shape of Punk to Come, Refused, great fucking band, oh my goodness. It's a very like artsy hardcore, I don't know how to explain it, it's not like just something you fucking just listen to and love, unless you're one of those (laughs) weird people that do, there's some people that do that. Don't get me wrong, but Refuse is a whole other planet of existence for music. Uh, the band first recorded in Van Nuys, California at Sound City Studios and completed the rest of Taunt Nick recording AB and Yuma. So many fucked up names. Uh, let me rewind real quick to Sound City Studios. If you don't know what Sound City Studios is, go watch a documentary on it by Dave Grohl, Sound City. Documentary is fucking amazing. So Sound City was like a super, super crazy recording studio back in the day. And it went under and everything was for sale. So Dave went in there and bought everything, Dave Grohl. Uh, and he did one last good session in there. Uh, Nirvana recorded in there. And that's where it got close to him. It was home. That's where they recorded the Nevermind album. Obviously, that blew them up. Uh, but like so many bands recorded in there. But he got people like uh, uh, Trent Reznor, Corey Taylor, um, Paul McCartney, Queens of the Stone Ages, Josh Homme. A whole bunch of other dudes. Like, it's definitely... Good. Like, go check it out. If you haven't seen that documentary, check it out. It's definitely worth checking out. Like, all the history and everything involved with it. It's really cool, but it's it's awesome. And the, the album, the soundtrack, fucking awesome. It's all original songs they make up on the spot. And I, it's, I loved it. It was really cool to see that. So, yeah. Go check out Sound Studio. I digress. Now, after the recording was complete, the band started a year and a half touring cycle that took them to Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. Towards the end, many of the band members were worn out and unsure if they wanted to continue with Poison the Well. I know exactly where they're coming from at that one. When you do a heart, like I can, I'm only uh, saying I know where they're coming from because I know what it's like to do shows and do shows and do shows and do shows to tour in multi countries, flying. I fuck. This, wow, to be a professional, you better gotta be on top of that shit. So, so having experienced some level of success at this point uh, with their previous records and the hard touring cycles and all this crazy shit, summer 2004, guitarist Derek Miller quit the band. Miller had been in Poison the Well for all three prior releases. He was in it to win it at the point, but it just became too much. 
Uh, so when he d decided he was going to leave, the material would eventually get scrapped due to overall unhappiness with the direction that had, he had taken the band. And the remaining three members took some time to figure out what they were wanted to do. It, that's kind of shitty because you, then you're like second guessing everything you did previously. So they eventually regrouped and added guitarist Jason Boyer to replace Miller. And they started working on new music ideas that would be the early stages of their fourth album, Versions. Another great album. I fucking, there's not very many songs that I don't like by these guys. The reason, though, is like, because it's hard and it's singing and it's good. It's a good mixture. For me, it's, a, it's, it's that right mixture. So after months of working and writing on material, the band set off in early 2005 and recorded with Pele again and uh, Lovestrom, L Street's Lovestrom at the Tonskin Studios in y Yuma. Yum Yumia? Is it Sweden, guys? Fuck. This, you know, by the time, I don't know what episode I'll be on when I do this, but I'll probably be able to, or figure out how to pronounce Swedish names. So why can't they just be all as simple as like, yeah, probably saying that wrong for fuck's sakes. <laughs> but that's when the band would record the versions. Um, and what would eventually become one of three, two of three, three of three in 2009. Uh, there was two songs in each of those little single releases. I think it was. I love what they did. And then like all the albums make a, an album cover. It's cool. They had worked with Hendrickson and Lovestrom uh, and You Come Before You and, and had been also working with them to follow up the material when Derek Miller had quit the band. Um, guys named Derek. If you're Derek and you're listening, don't take offense to what I want to say, but the, in my personal experience, and every dude that I met that was named Derek, not a good one for some reason. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying that's every Derek in the world. Sure, there's some nice Dereks, but the Dereks that I've met are just, I don't know, they don't, uh, they don't uh, do well with me for some reason. Maybe it's me. Who knows? Never looked into it. I never had a chance to look into it. So. After completing the first two recording sessions and returning home, Poison the Well announced that they were parting ways with Atlantic. Not surprised. Because of creative differences, obviously. Atlantic Record had given full creative control with the writing and the recording of You, you Become You. But after not seeing eye to eye on the direction of Poison the Well, they had, had decided to move and Atlantic Records agreed to let the band go. Which is really fucking rare. But I mean, in that time and age, too, it's like, it was a weird situation around then because of where music was going and where it was coming from and all that good shit, right? So uh, even though the band had no label, they returned to writing material. You don't fucking stop when you got something good going. Uh, the band had been in contact with Ferret Music, uh, music president Carl Severinsen about signing with, uh, signing with that label. Severinsen had been a friend and a fan of the band for many years and expressed interest in signing them. So it's good to know people. After signing that, the end of 2006... The band left once again for Sweden to finish up the record. The album versions was released on Ferret Music on April 2nd, 2007 in Europe and the third worldwide. If you guys are not putting it together, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you have, is Sweden. The good old Sweden. <laughs> when it's something fucking hard and it's something different, you go to Sweden. The thing is, though, in Sweden, they got all the good shit out there and they got all the, the know-how and the experience. I think that's where Sweden comes in as a big player and a big hitter all the time. So I'm going I'm to talk a little bit more and then we'll, we'll talk about we're going to go on their hiatus and we will listen together to Bachala, okay? It's going to be good. Don't worry. That's good. If you're liking what you're hearing so far, that's going to be good. If this is the first time you've heard them and you like them, I'm glad I did that for you. The writing process for the Tropic Rock, great fucking album. Uh, started a few weeks after Poison the Well finished up the touring cycles for versions. It seems to be evil. I mean, that's what you do. But the band wanted to make a record that was more focused musically and bigger sonically. Yes and yes. <laughs> Poison the Well wrote the entire record in four and a half months in a condemned and haunted bar. That I didn't know. That is fucking amazing. It's cool, like, when people go and are like, oh, this house is haunted. Let's go write a in there. It's like, uh, who was that that did that? Marilyn Manson? No. Nine Snails? It was either Nirvana, Marilyn Manson, or Nine Inch Nails. One of those three, they did it, they recorded. But there's obviously some other bands. So those are the ones that are just popping out in my head right now. They recorded in some haunted house somewhere like that. So Remnants of Ray's Downtown Blues, which is now Longboards in West Palm Beach, Florida. The Tropic Rot had originally been slated to be made with producer Jay Robbins, but had to be canceled due to serious family emergencies. Stephen Everett was picked up among other potential producers. The band thought he could capture the recording the way they wanted it and could start as soon as possible, so that worked out. That's that's a shitty thing, too. Finding a producer that will work with you the way you want to and can see it the way you want it, that, that you see it, or sees the potential of what you see, is very, very important. I learned that recording my band's album. It's the two engineers, two slash engineers slash producers. Great guys, nice guys. Luckily enough that I have good communication skills. We worked out. We had to figure out. It was good to go. There was a little. There was some differences, but after I got it across, it made sense to them. It made sense to me. 
We were on our way. <laughs> the record was recorded at Castle Oaks Production and the Candy Shop Studio and was released July 7, 2009 through Ferret Music. Album charted at number 180 in its first week of release on the Billboard 200s. Billboard 200s are doing 180. I mean, it's only 20 from the bottom, but for a band like this to hit the billboards, hey, <laughs> you're fucking doing it right. So there's a Okay, I'm going to get into the, the future song and then we'll talk about this mayhem that ensues after while they're on tour and stuff like that. So let's listen to Botula together because I fucking love this song. It starts out really, <laughs> really nice and then fucking spits in your face while screaming. It's like scream spitting. Sit back, enjoy. Turn this one up. If you're listening to this, turn this one up. Um, and if you don't turn it up, you probably might want it after because if you like this music and this is what it's going to be, there you go. Also, after I play the future song, I'm going to explain a little bit about the next few shows that are coming out. I got, so I got, a, weird, <laughs> I got a weird lineup coming up. Uh, it's just... Now it's going to be. Okay, so here you go. Here's Botula. Enjoy. So, okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, that, that was Botula. Um, so after every, because I play this on Spotify, so like when the song finishes, the the future song is the last one on my list that I make. Um, it, it Spotify does this cool thing where it just automatically plays another song from the same kind of type of music, same genre. And I just found another band. So it's pretty rad. Uh, it was, what the hell are they called? <laughs> I take a picture. They're called Darkest Hour. Great fucking band. I found them by accident. I'm going to check them out. Real fucking mean, real fucking nice, real fucking fuck. I just to say fuck the whole time, apparently. Jesus, titties. So like I said, after they did that thing and they went on tour, they hit number 180 in the first week of the release on the Billboard 200s. So they did good. So, they, you know, they're doing what they do. They tour. This is unfortunate. 
While in the first stop of their September 2009 tour with Billy Talent, uh, a great Canadian band, Poison the Well was fucking robbed. Like, what the fuck? Uh, so at the tour stop in Detroit, as the band was sleeping in their hotel, thieves drove off with their van, their trailer, and it contained all their music gear, their merch, and the majority of their personal possessions and clothes, which is fucking shitty. After taking a few days off, they got to, uh, they got a new van and some temporary gear and all that shit, and then they started producing and selling T-shirts uh, to raise money to buy new equipment. With the shirts containing all the details and descriptions of their gear stolen and serial numbers and amplifiers and all that shit. So they had to do something. Hope it helped. That's, that's, that's fucking garbage. That's some instantly bad karma. It happens more than it should. Even here locally, there's people always posting that their van get their, their fucking jam van gets stolen. It's fucking stupid. The year after, on July 14, 2010, Poison the Well announced that they are going on a hiatus to explore other interests. And since then, because they've been, that's it, they've been, they're done. These guys have been up to obviously staying up doing, doing stuff. Uh, the drummer Chris has been doing session work as well as drumming for an LA-based, LA-based electronic dance music band, Big Black Delta, and New Jersey hardcore band Census Fail. Ryan Pickman has still been involved with music, working with his former bandmate Derek Miller, making those bridges new again. <laughs> um, Derek Miller's band Slay Bells as their production manager and second live guitar player. I always found that weird. S- not session players, but like only live. Like if they're doing a, a live thing, and then I guess it makes more sense. But then like you're not part of the whole thing. Like I don't know. It's, it's just weird for me. Like I understand a session player, like going in and playing some riffs for a session, you know, for a band that's like, recording or whatever, right? But as a live member, I don't know. For some reason, like a, a band for hire, I, I get it. But I don't know. It's just kind of, kind of just. I don't know. Trips me out for some reason. Rise Records released a reissue of The Opposite of December and Tear from the Red in late 2012. I believe this is the double album, and you can get it on vinyl, which I really want to do because it's like, it's just, it's a fucking banger. And it's fucking just a million songs, and it's great. You just have a, put it in and just have a hardcore day all day long. <laughs> and it's not even expensive, too. That's a great thing. Um,. <laughs> In May 2015, Poison the Well reformed a warm-up headlining show on May 15th in New York and a festival performing at a skate and surf on May 17th in New Jersey. I wish they would fucking... I hope they, they do it again and come back. Like, it's... I just... That would be great to see fucking Poison the Well. That would be great. Uh, for these shows, the band performed as Ryan Primick, Chris Hornbrook, Jeffrey Maria, Marie... Maria? Maria? I fucking said it earlier. Bradley Grace, and along with new hired guitar player Ariel Arrow, that is a crazy name, uh, from the defunct Florida band Glass Eater. Ugh, I seen Duty Glass one before. It's not, it's not nice. Blood everywhere. It's fucked up. At the New York performance, Poison the Wells member Andrew Amberitz and Dwayne Hoyson were in attendance, and former guitarist Derek Miller joined the band for an encore performance of Ghost Chant. I think it's really cool when you can get back together like that and do that kind of shit. It's pretty rad. Uh, after the two May shows, the band members stated that further performances or a new album from Poison O Well were not planned, though not ruled out. So there's still a little bit of some possibilities there. They're kind of like giving us a little teaser about it. So after that, they did five shows in June and July with help from Vladimir Tavern, This Day Forward, A Life Once Lost. And Peter Allen from Homestretch on guitar. It's too bad. I really do hope that these guys do something like this again. And like, I don't know, do like a, not a best of, but like play all their fucking, wow, they're all great. Like just come out and bang it out one more time, man. Because it would be, I would love, like love. I would, like I said, I would miss work to go see these guys. So yeah, you know, wrap her up. Coming for this ride. I didn't take as long as I normally do for some reason. I just, um, just how it went. <laughs> um. So a couple things. Following this show, I have a different lineup. I'm gonna look at my list here really quick because I'm probably gonna do Jay Z, Post Malone, and then I'm most likely doing Motley Crue slash Nikki Six because I just finished listening to the, the Heroin Diaries and holy shit! If you guys haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Have you read the book? Whatever you do, just get it's fucking amazing. It's mind boggling, blows my mind. Anyways. Uh, then I'm going to do a, a local band, possibly do a local band. I, it's harder for me to do this local band because uh, it's going to be hard for me to find the information. I'll just be winging it a lot, possibly, just because I knew the, the lead singer was my tattoo guy uh, before he died. 
And then I'm going to do another Canadian band, which is going to be a uh, fucking this band. I'm I, okay. Anyways, but yeah, so it's going to be a shit mix. <laughs> Hey, just like the music I listen to because I love all fucking music. Folk music, I guess. I don't know. It's got to be right. I just, I just don't like it. It's, I'm not going to go and listen to it. That's how it is. I'm sorry. Or who knows? Maybe I'll find like a weird country covers. Like, uh, who was it? Devil Driver? I think it's Devil Driver doing country covers. Or are they doing some fucking weird chili? Who knows? Maybe it's going to be great. We'll find out. I'll check it out. And if it is, maybe, maybe that'll be my country portion of High Pine Stage Dives. So, again... The name is Ivan. I'm your host. Always will be your host. Unless I have somebody on the show that's going to maybe come interview me or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. I talked about it before. This was Poison the Well. If you never heard them before, go check them out if you like them. They got so many great songs. Like if you like their uh, more melodic, lighter stuff or heavier, lighter mix, there's some really, really, really good songs to like. Good thing about Spotify, you can make your own playlist and you don't have to listen to the whole album, which is rad. So they got a good mix for, for sure. It's not split down the middle, but it's, it's very it's very well rounded. So again, thank you for listening. Make sure you go check out all my social medias. Much love. It's nice and warm here. Hopefully it stays like this. Hopefully it's warm where you guys are at. I hope you guys are having a fucking marvelous day. Keep listening to music because it makes life that much better. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you again for listening to High Five and Stage Dives means the world to me i'm glad you could come on this journey with me and we'll keep doing it every week subscribe rate and review all that good stuff and keep listening to music because it only makes life better and we'll see you on the flip side stay rad